Hey guys, it's Al Captain. Welcome back to the Blackwell Legacy. Last time, we were reading through these letters that we got from Lauren's aunt's file. And the last letter we read was from Jack, Lauren's brother, which is Rose's dad, talking about how their mom, so Rose's grandmother, had some episode and went to the hospital and it might be the beginning of her dementia. So, let's see what happens now. November 13th, 1961. Lauren, you seem concerned after our last phone call. I just wanted to write and reassure you that everything is fine. Let us know when you're coming home again for Thanksgiving. With love, Mom and Dad and Jack. She, I guess she's probably in denial there. December 8th, 1961. Dear sis, mom's getting worse. You said it best during Thanksgiving. It's like somebody is watching over her shoulder. Paranoia. She sits by herself for hours, pretending to read when it's obvious she isn't. Lately, she's been covering her ears as if to keep out of sound and closing her eyes tight. Dad's losing patience with her. He's convinced she's lost her mind and I'm, s I'm starting to agree. She refuses to get any kind of help. Why can't she see that there is a problem? This isn't normal. Not normal at all. Why can't she see that? I hate to admit it, but I'm kind of scared. Scared for her. I don't know what to do. Jack. Let's see, February 23rd, 1962. Oh. Lauren, it has a name! Mom locked herself in the bathroom this morning. She sounded like she was talking to herself in there. Well, not to herself. It was like there was somebody else there, but there wasn't. I listened. I couldn't understand it, but she did say the name Joey. I asked her who later who Joey was, and she got really scared. Then she got angry and said, if you know what's good for you, never mention that name again. This could be the key. If we found out who Joey is, maybe we can save her. Jack. March 16th, 1962. Dear Lauren, well, it's done. The final papers have been signed. It hurt. A lot. But it had to be done. Mom has now been committed to a mental ward. I have to say, I am relieved. I know how you feel about it, but you weren't there. Uh, I am relieved. I know how you feel about it, but you weren't there. You didn't come home to see her screaming and tearing her, her hair out, running around the house, knocking down everything in her way. Cuts were all over her face and the house was practically destroyed. I was so shocked, I just closed the door and waited outside for Dad to come home. It was awful. She clotted him, clotted his face, and drew blood. It will haunt my dreams for the rest of my life. Thanks for coming out, Lauren. I don't think Dad and I could have handled it on our own. She kind of drained us, you know? Can I come to New York and visit? I need to get away for a while. Jack. So, now it's May 17, 1965. That's like three years later. All right. Congratulations, summa, summa cum laude. Sim, isn't it summa? Hmm. I always knew you were a smarty pants sis. Now you've got the documentation to prove it. Thanks again for letting me stay at your place for the weekend. It was just like old times, except you weren't smoking then. Smoking's bad. New York is an amazing city, and Columbia has a great campus. I can't wait to move down there in September, but until then I've got to deal with our grumpy old man. He's insufferable as always. Ever since mom, he's been hard to talk to, and very hard on me. I can kind of understand, it's pretty very stressful. I should tell him you're smoking now. Maybe then he'll concentrate on you for once. See you again soon, Jack. October 16th, 1967. It's happened, Lauren. Just like you eventually said it would. I'm in love. Her name is Maria. She's from Italy and we met in statistics class. She asked if she could copy my notes because her hand was tired. We ended up having lunch and we've been inseparable ever since. She's incredible. She's got the most amazing red hair and I want you to meet her. I'll come by soon. Jack. December 19th, 1970. Lauren, are you alright? Ever since Bob's funeral, he's been hard to reach. I know it's been hard on us, but it's been six months. I tried calling, but you never answer. I came by the other day, but you didn't open the door. I knew you were there, Lauren. I could hear you. I risked using the spare key you gave me, but you changed the lock. Come for dinner on Christmas Eve. 
Maria's a great cook. We won't ask any questions. Just come. Mom might be gone, but we're still here. I miss my big sister. Jack. December 28th, 1970. Lauren. Who is Joey? I went over last week to give you a Christmas gift. You didn't answer the door, but I heard you talking to somebody named Joey. Is it a boyfriend? Are you seeing a man named Joey? Is that why you've dropped off the map? Or just something else? I don't think I need to tell you what. For God's sake, talk to me! Jack. February 13th, 1971. Right before uh, Valentine's Day. Lauren, I know you're annoyed, but I am not sorry. I didn't want to do it, but you left me no choice. Hiring a private detective to follow you was the only option left. He told me some odd things. You won't talk to me, but you talk to total strangers. You go to every far corner of the city at the strangest hours, and you talk to yourself when you think you're alone. Don't deny it. He heard it, and so did I. Not that any of it made any sense. That alone is disturbing. Enough, but then he saw you collapse. You were all alone in some obscure park in the Bronx and he just fainted. He was about to call an ambulance, but then he saw you get up again and walk off like nothing happened. You were always there for me growing up. Don't shut me out, sis. Let me be there for you now. Jack. Jacko. Please stay away. Don't worry about me. There are things that need to be done, and I am the only one who can do them. Don't ask me to explain. All I can say is that I understand her mother more than ever. She was never crazy, Jacko. Trust me on this, and take some comfort in it. You've grown up, and you've grown tough, and you don't need anyone to fight your battles anymore. You don't need me, but I'll always be your big sister. Lauren. April 15th, 1973. I am returning your letter because I refuse to accept it. No, you don't need to fight my battles. I'm not 14 years old anymore, but we are still family, and that's important, especially now that Dad has died. Look, you obviously have something going on, and that's fine. I don't have to be involved if you don't want me to, but I still want you involved in my life. Maria and I are getting married in November. You are coming. No stupid excuses. So, let's see. November 1973. That's... Now it's November 24th, 1973. Greetings from Greece. If there's any words to describe the beauty of this place, it still wouldn't do it justice. A perfect spot for a honeymoon. Things have been busy, as you can imagine. But I wanted to quickly write to say that I'm glad you made the wedding. Hey, she did come. Of course, I'm still worried about you, but somebody has to be. You take care and stay in touch. Maria says hi. Jack. I'm a little surprised she actually went to the wedding. There are some pictures stuck to the back of this letter. Oh, okay. All right. March 31st, 1976. Dear Aunt Lauren. Yes, Aunt Lauren. You're an aunt. I'm a dad. Maria gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. We named her Rose Angela after Maria's grandmother. She's so quiet. She hardly cries at all. I'm all set to spoil her rotten. Maria says to take it easy. She looks just like her mother. There's a bit of you in her eyes, too. And mom and dad. Everything our family was, or will be, this child is it. Life is changing so fast. I just want to hold on to this tiny creature and never let go. The future is an exciting place, and I have everything I could ever want. I don't want anything to change. Ever. Jack. It seems, uh, ominous, especially since it's the last one. See the pictures? Nope, I guess not. How do I see those pictures? Okay, maybe someplace else. April 21st, 1981. From the law offices of Durkin and Goldberg. Dear Miss Blackwell, it is indeed within your legal rights to take custody of your five-year-old niece. With the death of her parents, you are the only living relative. Please contact our office and we will start the necessary paperwork. Sincerely, John Durkin. Phone call. Can I ignore it? I guess I'll answer it. Hello? Hello? Rosangelina, hi. Hi, Bob. Thanks so much for submitting your last review on time. For, for once. once? Yeah. I've got a little assignment for you today. Assignment? Human interest, Blackwell. Suicide. Mm. 
college girl named Joanne Sherman. Well, that's awful, but... You know the Brittany house, the NYU dorm? Yes, but... Speak to some people on her floor. Get a word in with the roommate. Listen. Speak to the RA, too. And hey, see if you can score a picture of the girl. But I don't do that stuff. I write book reviews. Versatility. Time to get out of your comfort zone. Jeremy's over at City Hall covering that strike, so you are it. Get cracking. I hate you <laughs> so much. Is freelancing for that stupid paper even worth it? I don't it? know. Well, I guess it keeps me writing, but... Oh, whatever. I'll just go over there and get it done. And now you're It's not like I don't have enough death in my life right now. Now she's an investigative reporter, too. Maybe this isn't a bad thing. It's like being a real reporter. Sort of. My old notepad should come in handy for this. I think it's funny that she, uh... Oh, what is it? Notes. Interesting. Uh... I think it's interesting that she writes book reviews, and at least in this part of the apartment, there's... Like, a couple books down here, and that's, like, it. I'd imagine it would be covered in books. All right, let's look at the pictures. Oop. Wedding photograph. Oh, there's Lauren. The mother, I guess it's Maria, and I guess it's Jack. And the cake kind of looks like a cheesecake. Is that my dad? He looks so young. I always pictured my dad as being older. I assume that's my mother. She sort of looks like she's me, got the red hair. I guess. Other than that, she's a total stranger. Kind of sad. That's definitely Auntie Lauren. She's looking at something off camera. Oh. I wonder what it was. Hmm. I don't want to ruin the picture. I don't okay. want to ruin the picture. Put away. And there's another picture. Christmas photograph. There's nothing to click. I guess this is uh, Lauren when she was a kid, and Jack when he was a kid, and that's Rosa's grandmother, I guess. She looks a little worse for wear there already. Alright, and we have notes now. Oh. Interesting. Oh, uh, That's something about this game I remember. So you get this notepad, and you can, like, come... All I know about Joanne is that she was an NYU student who killed herself. You can, like, combine things here and then become, like, clues that you can ask people about. But they're, like, so it's almost like a secondary inventory. But you can't, like, so you, they just, like, interact with each other in conversation. So Joanne, from our uh, assignment, is an NYU student who's living in the Britney house, or was, and now she committed suicide. She committed suicide recently, and there was a photograph she wants you to, your boss asked you to get a photograph of Joanne. So, I guess we're headed off to the university. Let's go. I really have to walk all the way out of here. Can I walk on Nashanti's door? Come in. Oh, I guess so. Let's go in there first. Let's slack off work. It's got cool music. Hello, like Rosa. Elephants. Come in. Hey, come Moti. in. Don't mind the pooch. He's harmless. Yes, we've met. I've met your pooch. He's a good boy. Good boy. That's Nashanti's dog. Can I pet him? Here, boy. Yeah. Aww. Hi, um, dog. His name is Moti. Right. Moti. See ya. What? Okay. You know I spoil you. Oh, good boy. Go get he, it. He's doing, he doing a trick. Oh, good boy. Anything else in here? Uh, no, not really. He's like talking to Shanti. Make a small talk. So, um, how are you? Creepy oh, smile. I'm just fine. Right, Moti? Aren't we just fine? Oh, jeez. Let's thank her again. Thanks again for helping me out earlier. I'd probably be sleeping in a hotel tonight if it weren't for you. Oh, didn't you hear? The strike's over. Ah, the strike is over. Really? Ha, ah, that's hilarious. It only lasted a few hours according to the report on the radio. I suppose that's irony. I suppose so. So, you play the flute, huh? Yes, I play the flute. It's called a bansuri. What about you? Do you play an instrument? Me? No, I can hardly play the kazoo. Let's see. You strike me as being creatively inclined. 
Are you a painter? A writer. Well, I'm trying to be a writer. I knew it. Anything published? Nothing really, aside from book reviews in the Village Eye. Village Eye? You mean that little paper they sell at the stand? You've read it? I've seen it around, but I've never actually read it. Perhaps I will the next time I see it. That dog is adorable. Oh, good boy. Monty. He's spoiled rotten, but he's good company. He's taken quite a shine to you, that's for sure. Huh. Yeah. Usually I'm not good with animals. You never had a childhood pet? A pet? No, I had a teddy bear. <laughs> well, you probably had the right idea. Moti's a little thing, but you wouldn't know it from the amount he eats. He's very active, it seems. Yes, that probably explains it. See that box of biscuits? I buy a new one Dang. every two days. Moti doesn't have a stomach. He has a black hole that sucks in ah, food. Funny. Feel free to give him one if you I like. I will do that. You have a very nice apartment. Thank you. A bit small, but that's New York for you. You seem very friendly with the people in this building. Well, I didn't grow up here. I didn't realize it was taboo to chat with neighbors. Well, it's not taboo exactly, it's just... Oh, I know, just one of those unspoken things. I've found that most people are pretty friendly though once you take the first step. People have their defenses up most of the time. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah I do. That was a very good observation, just in general. Probably about life. But uh... She's like the kind of person you want to come talk to you, like, oh, hey. But if you're like me, it's like, ah, oh, it's a little too uh, nervous to do it yourself. Why do you play the flute in the park? It's a place to go, I suppose. I was walking there one day and I had the bansuri with me, so I started playing. Next thing I knew, I had a bunch of people around me. So I go there as often as I can now. It gets me out of this stuffy apartment, and I admit I like the attention. Plus, Moti loves the dog run there. Well, he did until they closed it down. Why did they close down the dog run? It seemed okay to me. Nobody really knows. It started about a week uh, ago. This is pretty recent. Dogs started howling, oh. running around like maniacs, acting strange. Some even hurled themselves at the fence door trying to get out. They say it's some kind of high-frequency wave that's caused by electric cables or something. Some high-pitched sound that the dogs can hear, but we can't. Uh, but I know better. You know better. You know better. Definitely. Ooh. I noticed these things. I could tell that things weren't quite right. Something in the air. It's not a high-pitched noise. That would only cause a dog pain. This was more than pain. The dogs were scared. What was there to be scared of? I have no idea. But I know what I sensed, just like you did. Me? You sensed it. Don't think I didn't notice. I didn't sense anything. Well, perhaps. Maybe I'm just spouting nonsense. Ashanti's awesome. Oh, we're gonna feed the boy. Could I try feed the good the boy. Dog? Sure, here, take one. I have plenty. Go ahead and feed him. He's always hungry. Well, I'd better go. Take care, Rosa. Come back whenever you'd like. Let's give Moti the dog biscuits. Now, how do I do this? Hmm, you... these dog biscuits are really mushy. Ew. You know I spoil you. Go get it! Huh, I don't actually know how to. Do I just look at the dog? Come oh, here, okay. boy. There's not a way to use your uh, items just like that. Um, what do I do now? Just say, go get it. He'll do the rest. Go get it. Nom, 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 nom. See ya. See ya. All right. Bye, Nishanti. That was fun. You know I spoil. All right, I know. You're spoiling the dog. Go get it. Nom, nom, nom. All right. Let's get out of here. All right, that's a good uh, place to end this episode. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.